Dear viewers, I am Murad Hassan, the full type faculty of South East University. Welcome you all to this video lecture session. Today, we will discuss about motivation for the course of organizational behavior. First of all, we should know what is motivation and why this is important for business organizations. Motivation, this is the inner feeling or inner state of human being. Without ensuring proper motivation among employees, we cannot ensure good productivity in our organizations. So, motivation is very important for all kinds of business organizations. Let us see what is motivation. Many authors define motivations in several ways. Some of these are, by gluic, motivation is the individual's desire to work. Motivation is the inner state that energizes, channels and sustains human behavior. By Newstrom and Kate Davis, motivation is the strength of the drive toward an action. According to Barcelona and Skinner, a motivation is an inner state that energizes, activates or moves and that directs or channels behavior toward goals. And by coins, motivation is a general term applying to the entire class of drives, desires, needs, wishes and similar forces. From the above discussion or above definition, we can say that motivation is the willingness to exert high level of effort toward organizational goals conditioned by the effort's ability to satisfy some individual needs. Now, we will discuss why motivation is important for all types of business organization. You know that people need organization, organizations need people, but organizations do not need all types of people. Organizations need such people who are really human resources or human capital for them. Better motivated workforce is that resource human resources or that human capital. Now, we will see that what are the outcomes that means the positive outcomes or good results, results of motivated workforce. First one, obtaining job satisfaction. Number two, increase in productivity. Number three, favorable group behavior. Number four, increase in sales and productivity. Number five, creation of dynamism. Number six, ensuring proper training and development. Number seven, minimization of cost and maximization of output in productivity. Number eight, high morale of employees. Number nine, increased loyalty and organizational commitment. And number 10, better adaptation of changes. These are the positive outcomes or positive outputs of motivated workforce. So, the managers of all organizations should realize the importance of motivation and they should try to create an environment where every employee can feel that the wind of motivation is blowing. Now, we will see that how we can ensure the better motivation among employees, that means how we can develop a better workforce through motivation. You know that motivation is a very important factor or important job for all types of managers. Managers should know how to motivate their people because knowing of motivating the people is very important for managers. And here we will uh, discuss that there are two ways of motivating the people. That means there are two means for motivating the people. First one financial incentive or financial motivator. Number two non-financial incentive or non-financial motivator. Here about the financial motivator or financial incentives, you know that various financial incentives or financial factors can be introduced for motivating our people. And here the salary, increment, pension, gratuity, provident fund, insurance, travel allowance, bonus and festival allowances. These things are treated as financial incentives or financial motivators for the employees. If employees get these things properly or uh, adequately, uh, we can be assumed that 
our employees will be motivated. Now, we will uh, talk about the non-financial resources. Non-financial resources are very important to ensure the motivated workforces. And here, f besides the financial resource uh, incentives or motiv motivators, non-financial motivators or in uh, incentives have great impact on the psychological condition of human being. Here, the non-financial incentives are participation in decision making, quality of work life, job enrichment and job autonomy, use of praise, performance feedback, experience and progress, recognition and reward, job security, facility for promotion and encouragement of creativity and innovation. So, these are the financial and non-financial incentives or motiv uh, motivators for motivating the people. But managers should keep it in mind that beside the financial incentives or motivators, of course, we should create such environment where our employees can get the facilities of non-financial in incentives and only ensuring the financial and non-financial incentives in the working environment of our employees we can motivate our employees properly. From this discussion, we learned what is motivation, why this is important for business organizations as well as employees and also we learned that the ways are means of motivation. Dear viewers, now we will discuss about some theories of motivation. This theories of motivation is very important for understanding the way and how and in which way we can motivate our employees. There are many theories of motivation. Among these theories, we will discuss some three important theories of motivation. These important theories are theory X and Y, hierarchy of Nix theory and two factors theory. First, we will discuss about theory X and theory Y. Douglas McGregor the famous psychologist first proposed two distinct views regarding the people of an organization. And he said that there are two views we are giving treatment towards our people. And he said that these two views are negative and positive attitude towards the people. According to theory X, he said that this is the negative assumption regarding the people. We think that people are lazy, people do not like to do their job, people always try to avoid their responsibility and they do not show their creativity and innovation. Managers have four assumptions regarding people according to this theory and these assumptions are people inherently dislike work and whenever possible they attempt to avoid work. Number two. Since people dislike work, they must be coerced, controlled and threatened and punished to get them at work. Number three, employees avoid responsibility, so formal direction and pressure is needed for them to take responsibility. And the last assumption of theory X is, employees place security above all other factors and they do not display high ambition. These are the basic assumptions of theory X and we should keep it in mind that when we are managing our people, when we are trying to motivate our people, we should not follow the theory X assumptions because this is mainly about the stick and carrot. Dear viewers, now we will discuss about theory Y by Douglas McGregor. This theory assumes that employees like work, like their rest, like their play. They are seeking responsibility and always they try to show their creativity and innovation in their regular performances. Managers held by four assumptions of theory Y and these four assumptions are employees can view work as being as natural as rest or play. Number two, people can exercise 
self-direction and self-control if they are committed to the objectives. Number three, average person can learn to accept, seek responsibility. And the last assumption of theory why people have high ambition and they want to show their creativity and innovativeness in their regular activities. So, these are the assumptions of theory why and this is the perfect assumption for motivating our people. If we have this positive attitude towards our people, if we are thinking our people as human being, not as working tool, then we can understand them properly and we can feel their needs, we can feel and we can realize their status, their condition and their overall situation in the working environment only can only then we can motivate our people properly. We discussed the theory X and theory Y which is also the paradigm of all theories of motivation and we learned that theory Y this is the right assumption this is the right theory for managing our working people. Dear viewers, now we will discuss about another theory and this theory is very important and, and very well known theory in the field of organizations. This theory is called the hierarchy of next theory. Abraham Maslow, the great, great psychologist, first in 1943 he proposed this theory and he said that need is the basis of all motivation and he said that if we want to motivate our people, first we have to understand their levels of need. And according to this view, he classified five stages of needs in human being. And he said that these stages of needs are very sequential. People want to satisfy their needs one after another sequentially. And he said that if we want to motivate our people, first we have to understand and we have to identify that which type of need is dissatisfied with an individual. These five sequential stages of needs of human being are first on the physiological needs. This is the first order need of human being and this type of needs including hungers, thirst, shelter, sex and other bodily needs. Number two, safety needs. When people are satisfied with their physiological needs, then they are feeling about satisfaction of such kind of need, which is called the safety need. Safety needs including security and protection from physical and emotional harmness. Number three, social needs. Social needs including affection, belongingness, acceptance and friendship. Number four, esteem needs including self-respect, autonomy and achievement, status, recognition and attention. And the last category of this needs is self-actualization needs. It is the desire to become what one is capable of becoming to maximize one's potential and to accomplish self-fulfillment. Abraham Maslow said that the physiological need and safety need, these two types of needs are including in lower order needs. And the third need, social, fourth esteem need and the fifth need, self-actualization needs. These needs are including in higher order needs. And he said, when we are going to motivate our people, First, we have to identify and we have to know that what type of need is dissatisfied in our employee or with that individual person. Now, we will discuss about the last theory which is known as two factors theory or motivation hygiene theory. This theory is very effective and very popular to know the factors of working environment for motivating 
our people. In 1959, Herzberg first proposed this theory and he said that when we are going to motivate our people, first we have to know the factors of our working environment. And he said that factors are very much responsible for bringing satisfaction and dissatisfaction among the employees. And he said, first we have to identify the factor or factors which are really responsible for holding the employees in the, with their jobs and the factors which are really responsible for motivating them uh, for further growth and development. And he said that two factors are classified here. First one, he said the maintenance factor or hygiene factor. We discussed these two types of or two categories of factors which are responsible for job satisfaction and job dissatisfaction. Now, we will see some examples of these factors. First, the hygiene factors. Hygiene factors including company policy and administration, quality of supervision, peer relation, relation with subordinates, pay, status, job security and working conditions. And motivational factors are achievement, recognition, advancement, work itself, possibility of growth and responsibility. And Frederick Hasberg said, if employees do not get these factors with their working environment, they will be dissatisfied. That means, he said that this hygiene factors are very much responsible for job dissatisfaction. These factors are not working as motivational factors for the employees. The second category of factors he called the motivational factors and he said if employees get such factors adequately with their working environment, they will be satisfied. But if they do not get these factors adequately with their working environment, they will never be dissatisfied. That means, he said these factors are very much responsible for bringing job satisfaction that means the motivation among the employees. And he said when we are going to motivate our people, first we have to identify this factor that which factor is maintenance factor and which factor is motivational factor. And he said that of course, we should introduce motivational factors for bringing greater motivation among the employees. But if we are introducing hygiene factors or uh, maintenance factors for bringing motivation among the employees, then it will be the wrong job. So, of course, we should identify these two types of factors, two categories of factors for bringing proper motivation among the employees. So, dear viewers, in this lecture session, we discussed about the meaning of motivation, the importance of motivation, the means or ways of motivation and theory, three theories of motivation. And I hope that for knowing more and to learn more about motivation, which is the part of regular management activities, of course, we should go through our reference text. Thank you very much.